code for couples. Um, so we got the new year coming up and I thought I would do something New Year's-ish because I am a little bit of a organization junkie when it comes to the new year. I love to get like a new planner and I'm a little bit of an office supply whore. Um, I love my office supplies. Um, you know, I, I do the whole like cleaning of the house and clean all the baseboards. It's just like this whole like, oh, let's start the start the year off right. And I don't know why, because I do the same thing when it's school time too. It's like, oh, school's starting. It's time to start the year again. Anyway, I, I just love kind of the new year and it's like a chance to plan and think about things. And I take the week off um, between Christmas and New Year's to try to get my life a little situated of like set some goals, what I want to do for the new year. So when I was thinking about putting this podcast together, I, I was thinking, okay, relationship wise, what can, what can we do to kind of make sure things are like going in the right direction relationship wise for the new year? Um, and so I thought I would talk about getting your relationship house in order and kind of like different levels of your house and maybe picking one to work on during the new year. You know, everybody has, uh, everybody's relationships in a different place. And so depending upon, you know, if you're newly together, or if you've been together for 30 years, you're gonna be in a different place. That doesn't mean that somebody new and somebody who's been together in for 30 years doesn't need to work on the same place, but you know, it's it's different. So so I thought I'd give you some ideas about your relationship house, and you can consider what part of your relationship house you want to work on, um, and maybe how you can do that, uh, considering the challenges that we have as, uh, as first responder couples. Um, so what I'm going to use as a basis for this is um, Gottman's Relationship House. And so I'm going to go over, and if, if you are seeing the YouTube, I'm giving you a visual of it. And maybe we can scan this in and um, we'll make it as an attachment for the podcast so you can kind of see what we're doing. Um, but here it is. It's the Relationship House. And there's different levels to this house. Um, the first one, I'm going to talk about the walls. So when I have couples come in, one of the, I really I spend a lot of time assessing their house um, because hopefully you have some positive parts of your house, and then maybe you have some maintenance to do. You know, it's easier to do maintenance than it is to do a renovation and an overhaul. Um, so if you can do the maintenance on it, that is fabulous. So. We're talking maintenance here. Um, so first let's talk about the walls of the house. On one side of the wall, or one wall, uh, you have trust. And so trust, yes, it means do you trust your spouse, you know, to be uh, faithful to you? Sure. And good gosh, you know, that's a little bit of a challenge sometimes because we're gone so much. From each other and so trust has to be really deep and really strong with us um, I I can't tell you the number of well there's been a couple times I won't it's not numerous but my husband has come home and kind of said so I was at the park today and I helped a lady with her dog and then she lifted her shirt up for me to show me her boobs as a thank you and so I'm like Oh, okay, thank you for telling me that. Um, these things happen. It's, it's, Whitney is right here with me and she is going, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, oh yes. Um, let's see, there's other stories. I've had um, my husband come home and tell me that he got a crotch shot from somebody who was getting a ticket. Um, I've had a knowledge about Hooters girls giving him their phone numbers um, so you know it's it's a variety of things and you've got to like be able to share that stuff you, your spouse has to be able to share that stuff with you because if you don't make space for that to be okay then they're not going to share it with you so 
be careful. You know, that works two ways. You know, I'm talking about do you, how what's that trust like? But, you know, keep in mind that if you're wanting that back, if you want to know that stuff, then, you know, you've got to make space, space for it. You know, the, the other part about trust is emotional trust. So if there's a bad call and they're coming home or you've had a really bad day, you need and, and they need to have an emotional space to be able to kind of dump and share. And if our response is, oh my gosh, I don't want to hear about that, it freaks me out, it scares me, uh, not emotional space. You've got to make that emotional space. This is the trust that is so important to our relationship. So think about the emotional trust that you're providing and that you're receiving. Is that to the level that you want it and need it to be in your relationship? If not, maybe it's a place to work on the relationship this year. Let's talk about the other wall, which is commitment. So this is a 2D, 2D diagram, not a 3D diagram. So there's not four walls, just saying. Um, so the other wall is commitment. Um, commitment is, are you willing to stick through the hard stuff? I can tell you times in my relationship where it, it was not fun. It was hard. Um, we had a year there where I was like, wow, I don't want to live this year again. Um, just because things happened with both of us personally, there was stuff going on at the job. Um, you know, we just weren't really kind to each other all the time. So are you committed? Are you are you in it for the long haul? A lot of times if people have commitment, I am less worried about like, I think we can build trust. Commitment's tough. Um, so are you committed? Is your spouse committed? Are y'all committed to the level that you want to be? Does that need to be tweaked? Do you need to do some little some maintenance there. Um, the foundation of your relationship is going to be the love maps. So think of love maps this way. Um, love maps are, uh, if you had a map of a city from 1990 um, and I asked you to go someplace in town, would you be able to get there? Maybe. Um, how much faster or more accurate would it be if you use the GPS on your phone? So that's the difference. You know, when couple, when you first get together, you create a map. How accurate is that map? How up to date is it? You know, with a GPS and your phone, I mean, I use Waze. That thing updates all the time. It knows traffic. It reroutes me. Like, my maps are really freaking accurate. And I can, if you use any kind of traffic, you just circumvent the traffic. And you just trust it because you're like, okay, I'm, you know, it's what I'm doing. If you don't keep those maps updated, your foundation for your house ain't going to be so good. You're going to have you know, those cracks, you're gonna have to do some foundation repair, and that's expensive. So you want to try to keep the maintenance, sorry, now I'm thinking about, oh, well, you know, water your foundation, because that's what I have to do in the heat in Texas. Anyway, um, but you know, you wanna keep those love maps up to date. How up to date and accurate are those love maps for your uh, relationship currently? Do you know each other's world? Do you know what's going on? Do you know um, who bugs the crap out of your partner? Do you know what they're worried about? Do you know what they want to accomplish in the next couple of years? Um, you know, do you know their most embarrassing moment? Uh, do you know their favorite food if they were to die tomorrow? You know, it was that was weird. Do you know their favorite food if, if they had to have their last meal? So those are the kinds of things that you need to talk about. And building those love maps are important. And here's the deal. You can also build some sexual love maps too. Um, do you know sexually what your partner wants? Do you, do you know what they're into or what they would like, what they expect? Um, 
I, I think our sexual love maps have changed over the years of being together and the fact that we're older now. So that's something to consider and to think about. The next level is sharing fondness and admiration. Um, do you feel admired by your partner? Um, and do you admire your partner? Um, and when I think about admiration and fondness, I think of character. I think of not just that they're a good mom or that they're a good son, but what are the characters and the, the characteristics and the qualities that they demonstrate that you truly admire and that you're fond of? Um, some of the things that I am fond and admire in my husband are some of the things that bug me the most um, because he he is a guy who gets things done and I really admire that about him I have learned to make lists because of him I'm not as diligent as he is um, but he has a list and he crosses his stuff off his list and I admire that because that to me is like he stays focused he helps out around the house he contributes um, I admire his integrity, but sometimes it drives me nuts. I'm like, can't you just find some gray area? No, it's black and white, right and wrong. I'm like, uh, you're right. You know, and, and so some of the things that we admire and we're, and we're fond, sometimes we're not fond of what we admire, but you know, we try to be like, those are part of the things that we love. So, and then do you feel that same way? Do you feel like your partner feels that same way about you? So something to think about. The next one is turning toward versus turning away. This is, so turning toward is walking into something with your partner. I think that's the best way I can describe it. It can be something little, it can be something big. So if I am driving down the road and my husband says, Oh my gosh, look, there's a monkey on that sign because he's into monkeys. Um, then, and I say, oh yeah, that's, that's kind of a funny looking monkey. I have turned toward him. It is that easy. But if he says, oh look, there's a monkey on that sign and I roll my eyes or just ignore him, I have turned away or maybe even turned against. If I say something like, oh my God, what with the monkeys? That's turning against. So it can be little things like that. Like how, and this is probably an area I probably need to work on a little bit, to be honest, because sometimes my husband gets to talking and he has a habit of, he has a voice for our, our daughter dog, um, Gabby, and to be like, mommy, blah, 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 and he'll be talking like that. and. For me, it'll kind of go one in, ear, one in one ear and out the other because I'm like, ah, okay, not important. But that is me turning away. And, and I need to be present with him. I need to be engaged with him. And so that is a turning away versus turning against or turning, turning towards, sorry, turning toward versus turning away. You know, the other thing is, is this can be a bigger thing. So if I see... You know, we all know those faces that our spouses make. And so if I see that face, I might say, I'm not likely to get a good response if I say something like, you doing okay? Or what's wrong? That doesn't necessarily get me the response I want. I might say something like, you look concerned. Or you look like you're in pain. Um, and that is probably more turning toward him and finding out, or man, you seem really stressed, what's going on? That's a turning toward. Um, if I see the face and just ignore it, that's a turning away. So how often are you walking into difficult situations? How often do you feel like your spouse walks into difficult situations with you? You know, sometimes we open doors, like, uh, uh, yesterday, I texted my husband and I said, I was doing great today until my last session. I need a glass of wine. And he had an option when I got home to say nothing to me. And it was probably 30 minutes. And then he said, so what was up with you needing a drink when you got home? And he walked into that. He turned toward me. 
and I was like, wow, well, let me tell you, let me tell you what happened. Um, so think about that. So we have the, so far up on the bottom, we have love maps, fondness and admiration, turning towards versus turning away. And I'm going to do one more part of the house and just kind of skim over the other ones. The positive perspective. The positive perspective starts as kind of the barrier between the conflict layer of the house and your friendship layer of the house. The positive perspective can really make conflict easier or it can make your friendship a whole lot harder. So how much of a positive perspective do you have on situations or what your spouse says or what happens in your relationship? So the let me let me take something easy so uh if i am if we're going somewhere and my husband puts on a shirt and i say oh are you wearing that if we have a negative sentiment between us going on he might just throw his shirt down and go pick up another one or he might say, oh my gosh, you've got something to say about everything that I pick out of my closet. Um, or he might get snarky and just say, yeah. So that would be like a negative perspective, okay? Um, the positive perspective would be him maybe getting curious about why I asked. So he might say, yeah, I'm gonna wear the shirt. Um, why do you ask? And it might be, oh, well, if you're wearing that, then I'm gonna change because I was gonna wear a sparkly sweater. It, it can be as simple as that, but you don't know if you don't have that positive perspective in your part of your relationship. Let me spin it around to a way that's uh, probably more relevant to kind of some of what we have to walk into. So, um, spouse comes home from shift uh, maybe you don't know what kind of shift they, they've had. And so they come home and they maybe are a little short with you when they walk in the door. Now, does it make it okay that they're short with you? No, I want to say that. However, if I have a positive perspective in our relationship and I know that deep down um, my partner loves me and cares about me, then I'm not going to personalize that snarkiness when he came home. Um, I can then say, oh, you know what? Um, they probably had a hard shift. I need to let them decompress. Um, I'll reapproach that later. Because I can have a positive perspective. That doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. That doesn't mean you maybe don't get like, that don't feel good. Um, and like I said, it doesn't mean it's okay. But that positive perspective allows me to provide a generous explanation to what's going on. Um, so how is your perspective in your house? Are you sagging down in some negative sentiment? Um, I call it the green slime. So if you think of like the slime that's coming over your friendship, um, and it definitely impacts your conflict too. Or are you able to provide some generous explanation? Um, so think about how that positive perspective works within the relationship. So then if you go up into the relationship house, you have the conflict layer, you know, do you need to be more direct in some of your communication? Do you need to manage conflict in a different way? And then the upper part of the house is called um, making shared meaning and making life dreams come true. And some of that is what are, what are the goals that you want to have for your relationship? What kind of contributions do you want to make towards society? Um, what are your dreams for retirement? It's kind of like a more global perspective. Uh, one of the activities that I give for to clients a lot of times is to make a list of, you know, what are 25 things that you want to experience in your relationship? And that's kind of a fun thing to do. Um, so think about scanning through your relationship house, you know, and let me go through those really quickly. You have the walls that are trust and commitment. You have the foundation of the love maps. You know, do you want that up-to-date GPS or do you want one from the 90s? Um, you have fondness and admiration. Do you feel admired and, and fond 
Uh, do you feel like do you feel like your partner feels that way about you? Do you feel that way towards your partner? Um, do you turn toward or away from different things in your relationship? Do you have a positive perspective on your relationship? Um, so scan through those aspects of your house and see if there's something as a part of that relationship that you want to work on in the given year. Um, sit down with your partner, talk to them about it, see maybe what you want to do, um, some activities that might impact that. And if you need some thoughts about that, feel free to shoot me an email, um, connect with me on Instagram or Facebook either way. Um, and I think I'm probably going to do a live something soon. So uh, if y'all are on, you can connect with me and maybe we can do some Q&A live. It'd be kind of fun. And these are great questions to bring to me if you want to do that. So um, I hope you have a great new year and everything stays safe. Um, and until then, keep everything code four.